I definitely want to have a power inverter in the trunk of my car. I want to have an air compressor as well as a jump starter. Why not just go with a single device that has it all integrated? 10 different units to test, so let's get the testing underway and see which integrated unit is the best. In the first test, we'll see which brand inflates a tire the fastest. Then we'll see which jump starters make the most current and which ones go up in smoke. We'll see which jump starter can start a vehicle with a completely dead battery. Then we'll see which one has the best power inverter. At a price of only $118, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Stanley. The Stanley unit has a sealed lead acid battery. The jump starter is 1200 amps peak and 600 instant. The power inverter is up to 500 watts. We're going to test that. Stanley claims that their air compressor can inflate a car tire. We're going to test that too. The Stanley has a 120 volt outlet and three USB ports. The Stanley does not have a 12 volt socket. You can use an extension cord to plug into the back of the Stanley unit to give it a charge. The power on the LED light, you simply push the LED button. The LED light has 270 degrees of range. The Stanley brand is made in Vietnam. The Stanley is fully charged. The Stanley weighs 17 pounds. To measure the loudness of the air compressor, I'll place the sound meter 36 inches or one meter from the sound meter. The Stanley is pretty loud at 85 decibels. All of the power stations are fully charged. So let's see how quickly each of the brands can inflate a tire that's on a small pickup truck. To use the air compressor, you set the unit to the desired air pressure and then you start the unit. I'll set the tire pressure to 35 PSI. And the Stanley was making pretty decent progress, but it suddenly powered down at 10 minutes. The gauge on the Stanley indicates 20.4 PSI, which is very close to the same as the tire pressure gauge, which is showing 21 PSI. The hottest part of the case on the Stanley is 115 degrees Fahrenheit. After 10 minutes of use, the Stanley is at 12.82 volts, which is pretty close to fully charged. At a price of $134, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Potec. The Potec also has a sealed lead acid battery, 1500 peak amps, 150 PSI air compressor, and 300 watt power inverter. The unit comes with a charge adapter that's stored in the side compartment. You can charge this unit using a 120 volt outlet or your vehicle's 12 volt accessory. The Potec has a USB port, a 12 volt socket, and two 120 volt outlets. The air pressure hose is stored in a side compartment. This unit has a manual gauge and you'll have to watch the pressure until it reaches the desired pressure. The Potec is made in China. The battery is fully charged. Just like the Stanley, the Potec also weighs 17 pounds. And the Potec isn't quite as loud as the Stanley at 81 decibels. The analog gauge in the Potec is pretty small and the numbers are very close together, making it a challenge to inflate the tire pressure to exactly 35 PSI. At 15 minutes, the tire pressure appears to be right at 35 PSI. It looks like the Potec pressure gauge is off by about 2 PSI. The Potec has plenty of charge left at 12.8 volts and the hottest part of the case is about 107 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $140 is this Cosway brand. 1500 peak amps. You can charge a unit using your car's 12 volt accessory or 120 volt power source. Instructions for using the jump starter are printed right on the side of the unit. Jump starter on off switch. The Cosway has two USB ports, two 12 volt sockets, and a 120 volt outlet. To power up the LED light, you simply hold down the power button for three seconds. The Cosway brand is made in China. The Cosway is the heaviest yet at 20 pounds. And the Cosway is the loudest yet at 86 decibels. And the Cosway needs 19 minutes or four minutes longer than the Potec to inflate the tire. However, the pressure gauge on the Cosway is pretty accurate. The extra run time needed to inflate the tire did drain the battery a little bit more than the Potec. 12.68 volts, which is still near a full charge. The hottest part of the Potec is nearly 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Also at a price of $140, the same price as the Cosway is the Schumacher brand. 1200 amp jump starter, 200 watt power inverter, 150 PSI air compressor, built in LED light. The Schumacher has a USB port, two 12 volt sockets, and two 120 volt outlets. You can use an extension cord and a 120 volt outlet to charge the Schumacher. The Schumacher includes both an air compressor as well as an inflator. The Schumacher is assembled in Mexico. The Schumacher weighs 17 pounds. And the Schumacher makes about the same amount of noise as a Stanley at 85 decibels. And the Schumacher seems to be the fastest yet, inflating the tire to 35 PSI in only 12 minutes. Unfortunately, the Schumacher's gauge is off by about 7 PSI, so let's keep on inflating the tire until we reach 35 PSI. So it took a total of 15 and a half minutes to reach 35 PSI. The battery life indicator still shows 96%. The voltmeter on the Schumacher is pretty close to the same as the ohmmeter at 12.7 volts. The hottest area on the battery case is around 106 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $149 is this DeWalt brand. 1400 peak amp jump starter and 120 PSI air compressor. The DeWalt brand is the only brand that we'll be testing that does not have a power inverter. It does have two USB ports. You can use an extension cord or a 12 volt accessory socket to charge the DeWalt. The DeWalt also includes an option to test your alternator. The DeWalt brand is made in Vietnam. The DeWalt is the second heaviest yet at 18 pounds. And the DeWalt is the quietest yet at only 80 decibels. 
And the Dewalt made it to around 29 PSI when the compressor shut off after about 10 minutes and 13 seconds. And the electronic gauge in the Dewalt seems pretty close at 29 PSI. The voltmeter is pretty accurate and there's still plenty of charge left at 12.65 volts. The hottest part of the Dewalt case is 130 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $150 is this Stanley Fat Max. 1400 watt jump starter, 120 PSI compressor, and 500 watt power supply. A 12 volt USB and two 120 volt ports. The Dewalt also includes a built-in charge adapter. The Stanley Fat Max is made in Vietnam. The Stanley Fat Max weighs 19 pounds. And the Stanley Fat Max is the quietest yet at only 79.5 decibels. And the Stanley Fat Max made it to 10 minutes before it shut off to keep from overheating. And the pressure gauge on the Stanley Fat Max indicates 26.5 PSI. The gauge on the Stanley Fat Max seems to be pretty accurate. The voltmeter on the Stanley Fat Max seems pretty accurate as well, very close to 12.65 volts. The hottest area on the Stanley Fat Max is only 95 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $153 is this cat brand. 1000 amp jump starter and 120 PSI air compressor. 200 watt power inverter. The cat is made in Vietnam. The unit has a built-in charge port. Four USB ports as well as a 120 volt outlet. Use the up and down arrows to set the air pressure. Press the air button a second time to start the air compressor. The cat weighs 18 pounds, 81 decibels for the cat. Just like the other brands, the cat shut off at 10 minutes and made it to about 27.3 PSI. The pressure gauge on the cat seems pretty accurate. The voltmeter is also pretty accurate at 12.6 volts. The hottest part of the plastic case is 112 degrees Fahrenheit. At a price of $170 is this Die Hard brand. Two USB, two 12 volt, and two 120 volt ports. 1,150 peak amps, 400 watts of AC power, built-in charge port. Pushing this button provides information on the battery percentage of charge. It also activates the AC inverter as well as the compressor. The Die Hard brand is made in China. To set the tire pressure, push the plus or minus button to the desired pressure and then push the compressor start button. The Die Hard is the lightest yet at only 16 pounds. 80 decibels for the Die Hard. And the Die Hard ran for just 18 minutes before the Die Hard shut off when it reached 35 PSI. The tire pressure on the Die Hard is off by around 3 PSI. After 19 minutes of running the compressor, the voltage is very good at 12.74. The hottest area of the plastic case is around 111 degrees Fahrenheit. Also the price for $170, the same price as the Die Hard, is this Michelin brand. 1000 peak amp jump starter, 200 watt power inverter. The Michelin even includes a radio. Two 120 volt outlets, includes a USB as well as a 12 volt port. You can charge a unit with either 120 volt or the 12 volt adapter. The battery life indicator indicates that the unit is fully charged. The Michelin brand is made in Vietnam. The Michelin weighs 16 pounds. 82 decibels for the Michelin. And the Michelin tire inflator made it to 35 PSI in 18 minutes without shutting down. The pressure gauge on the Michelin is off by around 3 PSI. The battery still has plenty of charge left at 12.63 volts. The top of the Michelin is around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Also the price of $170, the same price as the Die Hard in the Michelin is this Zoon Dion brand. 1400 peak amp jump starter, 400 watt AC power, as well as 260 PSI air compressor. One USB port, as well as two 120 volt ports. Two 12 volt sockets. Analog air compressor, as well as battery life indicator. You can charge the Zoon Dion with either a 12 volt or 120 volt source. The Zoon Dion is made in China. The Zoon Dion weighs 18 pounds. 83 decibels for the Zoon Dion. And the Zoon Dion looks to be very close to 35 PSI at only 12 minutes and 30 seconds. The tire pressure is a little bit low, so I'll keep on going. And a Zoon Dion made it to 35 PSI at right at 13 minutes. The battery is nearly full at 13.06 volts. The hottest area in the Zoon Dion is only 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Only 6 out of 10 units made it to 35 PSI, and the Zoon Dion is the fastest at 13 minutes. The Potec performed well at 15 minutes, Schumacher 15 and a half, Die Hard and Michelin 18, and the Costway 19 minutes. If air compressor noise is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Stanley Fat Max is the quietest at 79.5 decibels, but the Dwalt and the Die Hard are nearly as quiet at 80 decibels. The Potec and the Cat were slightly louder at 81 decibels. If weight is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Die Hard and the Michelin are the lightest at 16 pounds, but the Stanley Potec and Schumacher are only one pound heavier at 17. Let's compare the performance of the power inverters next using a couple of 100 watt bulbs as well as a 250 watt heat lamp. We'll also use a 500 watt halogen light for a couple of the brands. I'll be using a fan speed controller to dial in the maximum current for each of the brand beginning with the Stanley brand. We'll keep track of the electric load using this kilowatt device. And the Stanley is around 122 volts without a load. The Stanley's power inverter is rated for 500 watts and easily handled incremental power increases but began running into a problem around 450 watts. The Stanley peaked at 477 watts very briefly. So the Stanley didn't quite reach the 500 watt rating but it was fairly close. 
The Potec is rated for 300 watts and is at 118 volts without a load. And the Potec actually exceeded its 300 watt rating, making it to 337 watts briefly before powering itself off from the overload. The Cosway is at 117 volts and it's rated for 200 watts. And the Cosway came very close to reaching its 200 watt rating, making it to 194 watts. Without a load, the Schumacher is at 126 volts. The Schumacher is rated for 200 watts. And the Schumacher's display shows 195 watts, while a kilowatt device shows 211. So the Schumacher exceeded its rating. And the Stanley Fat Max is rated for 500 watts, and it started off at 121.4 volts. The Stanley Fat Max briefly made it to 435 watts. It was lights out pretty quickly when attempting to go above 435 watts. The Cat is rated for 200 watts, and it started off at 122.8 volts. And the Cat brand did exceed its 200 watt rating, making it to 211 watts. The Die Hard started off at 121.1 volts and it's rated for 400 watts. And the Die Hard did a pretty good job just about reaching its 400 watt rating, making it to 397 watts. The Michelin started out at 115.8 volts and it's rated for 200 watts. And the Michelin made it to 200 watts for a fraction of a second before powering down. The Zoom Dian started off at 126.6 volts and it's rated for 400 watts. And the Zoom Dian performed very well exceeding its 400 watt rating, making it all the way up to 438 watts. If power inverter performance is a deciding factor, the Stanley came out on top at 477 watts, Zoom DN 438, Stanley Fat Max 435, Die Hard 397, and Potec 337 watts. All the manufacturers make some pretty bold claims regarding jump starter cranking amps. So let's use a carbon pile tester to apply a load and the clamp meter will measure the peak current beginning with the Stanley. All of the units are fully charged and the Stanley is at 13.1 volts. The Stanley is rated for 1200 peak amps and 600 cranking amps. According to the clamp meter, the Stanley made it to 388 amps at 4.4 volts. Unfortunately, the Stanley suddenly powered down and began smoking. Even after allowing the jump starter to cool, the Stanley jump starter no longer functions. The Potec is fully charged at 13 volts. And the Potec is rated for 1500 peak amps and 750 cranking amps. The Potec did quite a bit better than the Stanley, making it to 404 amps at 4.8 volts. Unfortunately, the load test was just too much for the Potec and it began to smoke as well. The Cosway is the heaviest power station coming in at 20 pounds. The Cosway is right at 13 volts and is rated for 1500 peak amps and 700 cranking amps. And the Cosway did by far the best yet at 445 amps at 6.6 .6 volts. And the Cosway survived the test without any visible damage or smoke. The voltage display in the Schumacher says 13.2 and the tester is at 13.1. Just like the Stanley, the Schumacher also weighs 17 pounds and is rated for 1200 peak amps. And the Schumacher just couldn't keep up with the Potec of the Cosway, only making it to 361 amps at 4.7 volts. The DeWalt is at 12.8 volts and is rated for 1400 peak amps and 700 cranking amps. The DeWalt made it to 395 amps at 4.2 volts, which is nearly the same output as the Schumacher. The Stanley Fat Max is at 13 volts and is rated for 1400 peak amps and 700 cranking amps. And the Stanley Fat Max made it to 391 amps at 4.5 volts before giving up. Just like the first Stanley unit that was tested, this one let off a puff of smoke, but the unit still functions. The CAT brand is at 13 volts and it's rated for 1,000 peak amps and 500 cranking amps. Even with a much lower cranking amp rating than the other brands, the CAT moves into second place behind the Cosway at 405 amps at 5.8 volts. No funny sounds or smoke from the CAT. The Die Hard seems to be overcharged at 13.9 volts, which is quite a bit higher than the other brands. The Die Hard only weighs 16 pounds and is rated for 1,150 peak amps. And the Die Hard made it to 421 amps and 6 volts before giving up. So the Die Hard moves into second place behind the Cosway brand. The $170 Michelin is right at 13 volts. At only 16 pounds, the Michelin is a pretty light unit and is only rated for 1,000 peak amps and 300 cranking amps. Compared to the other brands, the Michelin really struggled, only making it to 317 amps at 4.4 volts and moves into last place. The Zoom Dian is at 13.2 volts and it's rated for 1400 peak amps. The Zoom Dian performed better than the Michelin but not nearly as well as the Cosway Cat or Die Hard at 362 amps at 4.4 volts. The easiest way to make sense of the jump starter performance is to calculate the peak watts produced by each unit. It's a pretty simple calculation, you just multiply the amps times the volts. And the Cosway performed by far the best at 2,937 watts. The Die Hard, which seems to have been overcharged at 13.8 volts, finished in second at 2,526. The Cat finished in third at 2,349, Potec 1,944, and Stanley Fat Max 1,760 watts. The power stations are fully charged, so let's begin the next test. 
I tested the car jump starters with a battery that was charged to around 11 volts, and these jump starters did just fine getting the vehicle started. However, let's really put these jump starters to the test, jump starting this Ford Ranger with a V6 engine. The battery is only at 2 volts, and I've disabled the ignition system to keep the engine from starting. Unfortunately, the Stanley jump starter no longer functions. With the vehicle battery almost completely drained, the Potec just wasn't able to get the engine spinning over fast enough to start it. Unfortunately, the Potec is smoking. And the cost weight performed by far the best on the bench test at nearly 3,000 watts of output, and it did a terrific job on this test. And the Cosway definitely spun the engine over fast enough to get the engine running for nearly 18 seconds. Very impressive. The Schumacher battery is at 100%. The Schumacher bench tested at only 1,697 watts or 1,400 watts lower than the Cosway. And the voltage dropped quickly to around 7 volts, far too low to get the engine started. The DeWalt is at 13 volts and it was bench tested at only 1,659 watts. And the DeWalt voltage quickly dropped to around 8 volts, which is far too low to get the engine spinning fast enough to start. The Stanley Fat Max is at 13.1 volts and bench tested at 1,760 watts. The voltage display on the Stanley Fat Max showed a voltage drop to just over 8 volts, which just isn't nearly enough to get the engine spinning. The CAT bench tested at 2,349 watts, but didn't produce enough current to get the engine spinning fast enough. The Die Hard started out at over 13 volts and quickly dropped to around 7 volts. It almost made enough current to get the engine spinning fast enough. The Michelin finished in last place on the bench test and it really struggled on this test as well. The Zoom DN only made 1,600 watts during the bench test, and that's not nearly enough to get the engine to start. So the Cosway is the only jump starter that made enough current to start the engine with a completely drained battery. All the power stations are fully charged. So let's see which one has the most battery capacity using a power inverter connected to a jump starter cable. The power stations will be powering up a 500 watt bulb. The cutoff voltage for the power inverter is 10.5 volts. And the Potec lasted 5 minutes and 12 seconds with a 35 amp load before the voltage dropped to around 10.5 ending the test. Once again, the Cosway performed extremely well at 14 minutes and 33 seconds, nearly 3 times as long as the Potec. The Schumacher performed below average on the jump starter bench test and it barely finished ahead of the Potec at 5 minutes and 20 seconds. The DeWalt performed nearly the same as the Schumacher on the jump starter bench test, but it actually performed quite a bit better on this test, lasting 9 minutes and 19 seconds, which is only 5 minutes less runtime than the Costway. The Stanley Fat Max, which performed nearly the same as the DeWalt on the jump starter bench test, also performed nearly the same as the DeWalt on this test, lasting 8 minutes and 56 seconds. The CAT brand performed fairly well in the jump starter bench test and moves into fourth place, lasting 8 minutes and 11 seconds. The Die Hard only weighs 16 pounds or 4 pounds less than the Cosway. And the Die Hard barely outlasted the Potec and the Schumacher, lasting 5 minutes and 39 seconds. The Michelin really struggled on most of the other tests and it really struggled in this one too. It only lasted 3 minutes and 1 second. The Zoom Dian weighs 18 pounds, which is slightly heavier than average. And the Zoom Dian moves into second place behind the Cosway at 10 minutes and 45 seconds. If power station battery capacity is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Cosway dominated the competition, lasting 14.6 minutes or nearly 4 minutes longer than the Zoom Dian. The DeWalt finished in third place at 9.3 minutes, Stanley Fat Max 8.9, and Cat 8.2 minutes. The air compressor might be a little bit loud on the Cosway, however, it totally dominated the competition in all other categories. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.